I have here a Hall chip. And I'll show you a demonstration of this guy in just a second. First, let's talk about the Hall effect. It's very important in today's world of industry and technology. The Hall effect is basically just the Lorentz force. It's the fact that when you have a charged particle moving at some speed v in a magnetic field, in this case coming out of the board, there will be a force on that particle. So in physics, we write it like this. Well, the force is Q V B, and the direction is given by the right hand rule. So let's do that. So we have electricity, that is, so we, we have positive charge going this way, negative charge going that way. Remember, if electrons are flowing this way, it's the same thing as saying positive charges are flowing that way. So anyway, the current's going this way through the Hall chip. This, this black box is the Hall chip. Electricity's going through like this. We have a charged particle. It's moving with some speed v. And, it and there's a magnetic field coming out of the board. So the magnetic field's coming out of the board. So here's our right-hand rule. Index finger for the direction of the charge movement. Magnetic field coming out of the board. So the force is up. Now, you might say, hey, my physics teacher told me it's the electric field that's turning on the lights, etc. That's all true. But there is also a drift velocity. The actual electrons themselves are drifting at you know, something like 100 or 1,000 times slower the speed than the electric field. But there, are, there is moving particles when you have electricity flow. So here we go. Right hand rule tells us positive charge is up, therefore negative charge is down. So the Hall chip gets charged negatively on this side, positively on that side, due to the Lorentz force. This is the Hall effect. Now, if you're a young engineer, all you have to do is stick an electrode here, stick an electrode there, and measure the voltage between these two guys. Now, the larger the magnetic field, the bigger the force, and therefore, the more the charge separates, and therefore, the larger the voltage difference. So we can use the Hall effect to measure a magnetic field. And here's an example. So I have here, it's actually three Hall chips in one. There's a Hall chip for the X direction, a Hall chip for the Y direction, and a Hall chip for the Z direction. So there's three Hall chips in this guy. And turn it on, and you see over here, I'm just measuring the Earth's magnetic field. So this would be in this is in the z direction, y direction, x direction. And so right now I have this chip such that the y direction is facing upward, and I have here a rare earth magnet. So the y-axis should get very large. In fact, it went off scale briefly. And you'll see that the y-axis is dominating. Now if I flip it, you see that now it's facing the x-axis, and so this guy goes large. And then if I go for the z-axis, you'll see that this guy gets large, up oh, off scale even, whereas the other two aren't as large. Because this permanent magnet obviously has a field coming straight up like this. And that's why when I put it like this, to measure the z, the whole chip flat here measures the magnetic field. This voltage is proportional to the magnetic field that's coming out of here. So this is a great way to measure how strong your magnet is. It's also an unintrusive way to measure electricity. Because we know when you have electricity flowing this way, for example, you get a magnetic field going around it. So you can put a Hall chip on the outside of your electricity cable to tell you how much electricity is going on inside. There you go, the Hall effect and the Hall chip.